Good morning, evening, afternoon, I'm Tato Cat. Welcome to my channel today. We're playing Echoes, who's the 9 pin game previously. Um, after getting directions from ILF, we ended up in a, the creepy murder forest, and in the creepy murder forest cave, and in the creepy murder forest cave, we found a creepy elevator that we went down into the pitch blackness, and we found a little journal with notes about the discovery of said creepy murder forest cave, and... And that is where we left off. Let's continue. Expedition log. Shunbun 9th, 2573. I thought the drilling crew's description of this place was hyperbolic, but I was mistaken. Not only had this place left the light behind, it seemed to swallow it as well. That was, until the founder illuminated it. With the palm of her hand, she conjured light from her desire for light alone. A technique, she claimed, that the medicine staff taught her. At this moment, my mind is too shaken by the hallucinations to believe or doubt. I am simply thankful that it worked. I am in awe of this place, these tunnels that seem to go on for forever, go on forever. I see in the walls not just rock, but flesh as well. As the founder reaches out to them, they seem to shift as she leads us passages open and close as if they were never and always there. We are far from finished here, but I have faith. I must have faith. Oh, you were Eris. I'm reading something. Go away. <laughs> Contact sweep completed. Oh. Contact sweep complete, Commander. Wire chain connection has been re-established. Acknowledged. Can you hear me, Operative? I'm in the middle of something, and me go away. I am detecting abnormally high ECG voltage spread across all delta and theta frequencies, Commander. An ultra-low duration PSO purge could resolve the situation while minimizing the discomfort inflicted on Operative Lucid 9. Do it! And me, I'm in the middle of reading a really interesting story about our magical founder, okay? What the... Damn it, Emmy. <laughs> I wanted to see what happened next. <laughs> I looked down to see an intense green glow emanating from my empty arm. And unlike my headlamp, this glow actually manages to illuminate my surroundings. Those surroundings are unsettling to say the least while seemingly formed from metamorphic rock the cave passages are abnormally regular in shape with walls formed from columns upon columns of root-like structures held together with a gout of interlinked reflective nodules that seem to be bioluminesce in response to the green light coming from my arm, creating a positive feedback cycle. On the ceiling, hemisphere-shaped sacks plated with fractured granite polygons seem to deflate and inflate at regular intervals, almost like Avioli. Al 
I'll volley. Give me a second. I will pronounce this word correctly. Alveoli in a human lung. I know what those are. They're the little, basically, air sacs in your lungs. I'm a smart person. Just can't pronounce words. <laughs> Combining the dangerously low oxygen levels, the structure of this place, there's only four logical assumptions I can make. Either this is another vision, an elaborate ruse, a gigantic machine, or a portion of this cave is biological in nature. Ooh, weird. Weird, weird, weird. If the latter is true, I doubt I'll need a working scanner to figure it out. Don't strain yourself, operative. Well, you're here now. The green glow intensifies, and I turn to the commander, just in time to see her raise a radiant armored hand. What's going on here, ma'am? You're a natural nine. And that's what's going on. A natural at what? I don't even know what I'm doing. And that's why you're a natural. How'd you know you could use neural energy like that? I didn't. I saw it mentioned in... I looked down at my hand hoping to see, hoping to share the contents of the notebook with the commander, but it's completely gone. Here. Sorry, I was holding a notebook two seconds ago. I don't know where it went. A notebook? I found it on the ground. It was a law written during one of Rika Nijikawa's expeditions. I think said something about her using an old clan technique to project a light from her hand. The, the commander points over her shoulder. I don't suppose it said anything about those cave paintings on the wall over there. Cave paintings, ma'am? This place is making us hallucinate, isn't it? The commander nodded. Based on observational evidence, it looks like I've just emerged from yet another cryptic vision. As if I haven't had enough of those already. What's more, the commander seems to be in the same boat as me. Even though we're both wearing ventilated suits, which, to the best of my knowledge, are fully functional. With that in mind, I'm inclined to rule out mass psychosis due to atmospheric exposure, which leaves me with a couple of options. Either my armor is broken, or something very unscientific is happening here. Sounds like something very unscientific is happening here. Ma'am, you mentioned my use of neural energy earlier. Would it be correct to say that the functional, functioning biological nervous system is required to generate and manipulate it? For the most part, theoretically, anyone or more electrochemical logic processors with ATP driven ion channels can generate and respond to neural energy, but the effect is severely limited 
in simple processing networks, and those with no code expression mole molecules like nuclear nucleic acids. Because of that, we are largely prohibited from developing any meaningful synthetic bio-neural processors. Eris is a partial exception, but she relies on us to communicate and distribute information through the use of neural energy. The light you're emitting is the product of something we call neurokinesis. The ability to direct and manipulate neural energy to influence something beyond yourself. Every operative in the lucid cell has that ability, and I think you're trying to figure out if this cave does too. I nod. Might as well, ma'am. Already looks like the inside of something that crawled out of a locker room shower drain. Yeah, I could see that. The commander chuckles, but her focus remains elsewhere. Eris, can you parse all relevant anomaly, anomalous sensory data from Nine and I and distribute it into a shared human readable overlay? Parsing, Commander. Parsing, Operation Complete. Overlaying Filter to your integrated reality information systems. As data, no doubt, begins flooding through her neural nodes, the Commander's eyes widen with shock. Un Unbelievable. I skipped something. I thought there weren't any detailed reports on the founder's death. Should there be, ma'am? She shakes her head. No. Last century, there were rumors, numerous reasons that we could have been careful about what rec records we kept. True or otherwise, Nine, I think it's best that you keep what you, you see or hear in this place to yourself. I send the commander an affirmatory nod. Good. She nods back and steps to the side, gesturing to the cave wall behind her. See anything on here, operative? I approach for a closer look. At first I see nothing, just the slick root-like granite contours of the cave wall. Refreshing overlay, operative. Ornate patterns fade onto my field of vision, seemingly impressed in the flesh-like stone itself. On the far right, I see a mural depicting some sort of encounter and gift exchange between two cultures. Some sort of spiritual functionary stands in the foreground with gray braided hair, a set of decorated fur remnants, and a mask made from the skull and jaw of a bear. This shaman or priestess appears to be 
receiving a gift, a staff of some sort, composed of a spine wrapped around a central rod that emits lightning from its poles. The person giving it to her, likely an explorer, stands on the banks of a river next to a grounded sailing ship that exhausts a white vapor from its mast. He's dressed elaborately as well, and the three retainers surrounding him are depicted as having the heads of a wolf, a falcon, and a ibis. Ibis? It's, it's a bird, but I don't know if I pronounced that correctly. If this is... I think that's a bird. I'm pretty sure that's a type of bird. I don't know. I might have to Google that later. If this is what the commander saw on the wall, then I must have overestimated her sanity. I see another mural to the left of the first showing the priestess and her assistants presenting the explorers with an assortment of clay statues and pottery. Some appear to be decorative in nature and others appear to be practical, but all of them bear the same chord marking patterns. Beneath both is an identical inscription composed of a moon phase diagram and string of indecipherable characters, likely a caption or timeline of some sort. It's likely a hallucination that has no bearing on reality, but on the off chance that it isn't, it's enough to consult with the heiress in the commander over. Ma'am, is there any evidence that these murals are the product of an internal or otherwise anomalous sensory stimulus? Good question. Eris, can you trace any of this anomalous sensory data back to any pre-neural stimulus, stimuli, or in grammatic processing sequences that would indicate a conventional hallucination. I'm afraid not, Commander, but I did detect a consistent influx of neural energy approximately five milliseconds before these cave paintings appeared to you. The data available to me suggests that it was configured to transmit the image directly into your visual cortex. The same goes for Nine, though other areas of her somatosensory cortex and posterior parietal lobe, parietal lobe appear to have been targeted. I am detecting that the influx is no longer present. I can lower the filter now, if you wish to see things through your own eyes. Do it. The filter shuts off, disappearing in a near instant, and with it goes the image of the ornate painted carvings in front of me. I gaze at the blank stone, roots left in their wake, even reaching out to run my fingers across the places where it seemed to have been marked. There's nothing there. That's strange. Those symbols seem familiar somehow. They are similar in style and function 
to the Dromon era hexenary numerals found on the obsidian tablets at Yo Yonaguni Commander. I thought Yonaguni was a natural formation. Most of it was, Nine. But back in 2031, archaeolo archaeologists from the University of Isamu found traces of a 4,000-year-old settlement on top of it. They found some stone tablets in relatively decent shape with a good number of words, phrases, and numerals written on them in Sino-Tibetan Egyptian hieroglyph hieroglyphs and Proto-Japanese script, along with a fourth script they couldn't identify. Unfortunately, the UOI censored their findings. Things eventually got so bad that the death of archaeology and the dean of archaeology and his associates in Limiskate started making accusations of fraud and calling for their destruction. We managed to save them by locking them up in the corporate archives back in two. That way, they'd be forgotten by anyone outside the board of or SSD, and the outrage would subside. What happened to the archaeologists? The commander grins. For that, you'd have to ask the chairman, but I suspect he's paying them well. Not much further to the meeting point operative. Well, it's been an interesting journey. Thank you, ILF. I would have never seen this if it wasn't for you. We should get moving. You have arrived at the coordinates given by spear operatives. I looked up. In front of me is a smoothed out vertical rock face on the far side of a dead end. If this is the entrance to the ILF base Spear mentioned, this center then is very well concealed. You sure about that, Eris? I am certain, Commander. Unless you decided to adjust your armor's gyroscope sensors in the field, there is no way that I could have accidentally misled you. Pieces of stone and organic matter break off from the ceiling, raining down from overhead as the ground trembles beneath me. Well, that sounds kind of gross. Get them inside, says question mark, question mark, question mark, now! Something wraps around my arm and pulls me forward. Stuff is happening. Do I click? Or is it gonna... Okay. I follow the commander's lead, offering no resistance, as I stumble past a camouflaged stone shutter and into a rudimentary airlock that scans us without delay. Once the atmosphere finishes cycling, I meet Ford once again, though this time there's enough light for me to see who's doing the yanking. A guard clad in heavy armor releases his begrudgingly tolerated hold on my wrist and steps out in front of me. I regain my footing almost immediately, buying myself a few milliseconds of free time, time which I take to analyze my surroundings the best of my ability. 
Well, this is not what I thought we'd be seeing, given where we were just at. Definitely looks safer than the other places we've been in. I don't see anything I could trip over. I mean, if it's a stark, I might bump into that table, but... I like this place. <laughs> The structure I've just entered is nothing like the endless winding passages behind me. Instead of pitch black tangled worm tunnels carved in metamorphic rock, my surroundings appear to be some sort of heavily fortified bunker. Munitions depot or a combination of the two. Gone are the miles upon miles of fleshy ceiling sacks, nodular roots, and swelling interconnected channels of sticky fibrous grout clinging to every surface. Something that would have been a relief if I had entered this place by choice. The walls have now enclosed me are made of smooth dull steel reinforced with graphene and merged into sturdy multi-layer chamber, multi-level chamber. The gleam of floodlights indicator diodes and various monitors against even metallic contours and support pillars suggest this place was built according to a clean technical design. The minimal lighting and armored figures sitting around dusty supply crates and worn heat lamps with cracker-thin combat rations in hand, however, conveys an inescapable spirit of scarcity, fatigue, and paranoia. I'm gonna look at the history, see if I missed anything on that last line there. I like to, I like it, I'd liken it to walking through one of the more developed parts of District 6. The only difference is everyone's heavily armed and staring right at us. All right, you two helmets off. This distrust in the guards dance and step is far from subtle as he adjusts the orientation of his rifle and moves to a position beside another standing with a grenade launcher slung over his shoulder. He chooses to keep his distance as he makes us the target of a perplexed and vaguely hateful stare. Ever in the dim, indigo light pouring through the smoky air, I immediately reckon- Oh, even in the dim, indigo light pouring through the smoky air, I immediately recognize the model of their armor and its colors as those of the Isamu Liberation Front. At last, we have met them. Spear wants to know where she's- who she's dealing with. She, who she's dealing with? So is it who I think it is? Do it, operative. I turn my head to the commander. A hiss of escaping vapor em emanates from her side as she disengages the magnetic seal of her helmet. I'm left with no choice but to comply. Better 
Well, um, I guess we finally get to meet Spear after all that stuff that we went through in the tunnel. We finally get to do it after the murder forest and the murder tunnel and the murder cave and the murder elevator and the murder cave again to the murder base. It seems like we'll finally get to meet Spear in the next episode. <laughs>